Good morning, everyone. Hi, we are very pleased to welcome you to the fifth STS Italia conference. Uh, we are a little, a little bit late, but we hope you will enjoy the beginning of this conference. Now we will have some speakers that are going to greet us from the Politecnico di Milano in the School of Design. So I'll just leave the word to our first speaker, who is the rector of Politecnico di Milano, Professor Giovanni Azzone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to be here. Thank you very much for your decision to having this uh, interesting meeting uh, here in Milano in our School of Design. Just a few words to let you know where you are. Politecnico di Milano is uh, the largest technical university in Italy. We have about 40,000 students uh, uh, that uh, are enrolled only in three issues that are engineering, design, and architecture. Uh, we are uh, the largest technical university in Italy. We also are the more internationalized university in Italy. At present, we have about uh, 5,400 foreign students in Politecnico, which means that in uh, Master of Sciences, we have uh, about 30% of foreign students, uh, and in a PhD program, about 35%. The School of Design, in particular, is uh, the more international of our schools, thanks to the traditionals of design in, in Milano, and uh, is uh, the, 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 the school where we've been more able to create not only, to have not only foreign students in Milano, but also foreign professors teaching uh, to our students. About 18% uh, 18, 18 of the courses in Master of Science uh, are taught at present by non-Italian professors. So, uh, why uh, I said at the beginning, it's very important for us uh, a conference uh, on a topic, uh, as the topic you, are, you will be discussing in these three days. We believe that uh, uh, the, let's say, opportunity for a technical university in Italy in the future derived from our capacity to create a, let's say, distinctive competence uh, that take into account uh, our history, our roots, and we say we want to be an international university with strong roots uh, in Italy. We have a claim that is technology, creativity, and culture, showing that we believe that our educational process uh, should focus uh, on the capacity to integrate these three issues. Technology, because we are in a technical university. Creativity, that especially in design is, let's say, the core competence for our students and professors. And also culture, because we believe that uh, the cultural tradition of our country can be an added value for all our decisions. How we are trying to uh, put this claim in practice? We are trying to change our educational process, uh, trying to add to the classical technical background, technical skills uh, of, uh, let's say, the typical uh, graduate in Politecnico di Milano. If you look at the behind in the room, you see one of the first classes uh, that uh, graduated about 150 years ago. And you have there a few of the entrepreneurs who created uh, the modern Italy. Well, we want to keep this technical background, but we also want to add the three other things three other pillars of education that are the cross-cultural orientation. We want to have uh, international classes in our Master of Science and PhD so that uh, Italian students are able to understand uh, the way of thinking of different cultures uh, and to be able to, uh, let's say, to, to be aware of the fact that uh, diversity is an advantage and not a disadvantage, not something to be afraid of. Another pillar is uh, interdisciplinarity because uh, in most of the problems that people will have to solve in their future uh, professional life, uh, they will be unable to work by themselves. They will have to work with people with different technical background and it's very important that they understand the pros and cons of different disciplines, the different language uh, and how to put together and to, com to communicate with different disciplines. And finally, social responsibility, because uh, we believe that uh, engineers, architects, and designers are people who shape the world uh, with, with their job. And uh, so it's very important that uh, uh, starting from their 
design activities, uh, they try to think of the possible consequence of different design solutions on the quality of life of other people. So it's uh, very important for us to be, let's say, a, a center of opportunities for our students uh, where we let different disciplines discuss uh, and uh, interact uh, in showing new direction for the future. So I'm very, very pleased of the fact that uh, you are working on design, making society through science and technology, so trying to put together different disciplines uh, to be an international conference and at the same time look at society and social responsibility as something important. Thank you very much for discussing such important topics here in Politecnico di Milano. Thank you very much to Professor Azzoni. Our next speaker is Professor Silvia Piardi, Director of the Design Department of the Politecnico di Milano. Good morning, everybody, and thank you to be here. I'm giving you a warm welcome in this conference, and a very warm, a very warm welcome because outside is very hot. Inside, it's quite a good. Uh, situation. I'm, I prepared uh, uh, some slides to, to present uh, the, our department, the Department of Design, that is a part of this important conference. The Department of Design is one of 12 departments of Politecnico and uh, was established uh, the last year, but uh, uh, on uh, the route of the uh, previous department, INDACO department, uh, who was established uh, about uh, 12 years ago. And uh, it's a part of Politecnico of Milan, in which we have design, architecture, and engineering. And I put the design in the first place because of uh, obvious uh, reasons. <laughs> And Politecnico has, uh, uh, has got uh, seven campuses uh, in Milan and uh, in uh, Lombardia, and uh, we are here in the second campus uh, of Milan, in Bovisa campus, who was, uh, who, uh, which, which was uh, a big former industrial area. And uh, here we have uh, uh, class, classrooms and labs, laboratories. The labs uh, system occupy 10,000 uh, square meters in uh, this campus, and uh, I invite you to visit them because uh, I think that it's worthwhile. We have uh, different, camp uh, different labs uh, for students and for research, and in these labs we can experiment, we can try to put in concrete things uh, our ideas, our projects in uh, the labs of uh, models or uh, prototyping and uh, colors and lighting and uh, fashion and uh, knitting and so on. We have some images, uh, color and lighting or modeling. In the, the design department is one of the three entities who, uh, who are the design system of Politecnico. Uh, they are the, the School of Design, and uh, we have uh, the Dean of the school, and I think he is uh, uh, able to present it better than me. The Consortium Polydesign, uh, who deals with uh, continuous education. We have about uh, 60, um, 58 uh, master degree, master, uh, masters of uh, one year in um, learning, uh, lifeline learning. The design department uh, is split in three fields and three sectors. We have about uh, 30 PhD candidates, 100 permanent professors, that is uh, uh, the teachers and researchers, and 33 young researchers. The mission of the design department is to promote innovation, development, and transfer of design culture and methodologies into the socio economic system. We, uh, uh, we are very um, um, interested in uh, the um, relationship between design and society. 
The, the three research areas are design and culture, product services and strategies, and environments, landscape, and mobility. In this conference, uh, we will deal with uh, a lot of themes, a lot of issues, and uh, um, sometimes they are very uh, far from each other, but uh, I think that the, this is a, a very good uh, uh, challenge to, uh, to have a new view on the relationship among society, science, and design. And uh, we are working very hard in design research area to understand how to define the borders of the discipline, because we are uh, in, a, in a strange situation, or a, a normal situation from a certain point of view, because we have to define the core skills of design research area but uh, in the, at the same time, we know that the contemporary culture and the contemporary world is going uh, f uh, to, a, uh, a, to disciplines without borders or with the blurred, with a very light border. So it's very difficult to balance these two uh, issues. And I think that this conference will be very useful for us. The research items on which we are working and we are organizing the, our research areas now are listed here, are the 12 or 13 macro areas. And inside these macro areas, we have about 100 keywords coming from the hard work done by our researchers, and these uh, uh, keywords are defining the, the different field, and these, there are uh, examples, but are uh, growing uh, day every, every day, I think. And this is a, a, a tentative of uh, representation of uh, our confusion, but uh, from confusion, uh, usually uh, born something interesting. Thank you and uh, have a nice conference. We have uh, three days of hard work and uh, I wish that it will be very useful for us all. Uh, thank you to Professor Piardi for this. A thorough explanation of the department. And now our next speaker will be the Dean of the School of Design, uh, Professor Arturo Dell'Acqua Bellavitis. So good morning everybody. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you. And uh, this is not an empty world. I really must uh, translate how we think it's very important to have this conference here. Being the dean, I'm not so much involved as a dean in research, but I take care of education. But uh, to educate in a proper way our students, we need new kind of food, new elements which just come from the research area and the conference like this one, you know? And uh, I was going through the tracks that I was given, you know? And uh, I've seen that in a way they give a kind of response to our being here. Our being here is just to improve our society through our products, which are our students, you know. And uh, going through all the tracks that you have pointed out, I do see lots of kind of responses to inner needs and inner questions each of us as a teacher has, you know. In our school, we try as much as we can to be quite innovative. That is to say, we are open to new ideas, even if we have a stiff and rigid system. In this very room yesterday, we have a very interesting conference on simplification, which in Italy is a big issue because, for example, in our school, as you know, we have four different bachelor degree, in communication, in design, in interior design, in fashion design, product design, in all the different typologies. And then in the, at the second level, at the master level, we have these four, plus design engineering and product service system. But we are planning for next year 
2015-2016, a new uh, kind of double degree between engineering, uh, managerial engineering, and uh, design. And just uh, two days ago, I was in a commission dealing with this kind of problems, and I realized that sometimes dreams have to deal with bureaucracy, and it's not always so easy, really, but we will be successful. So, uh, my colleague, Silvia, she was telling you about our system, about our uh, consortium, which gives us the opportunity to give post-formal uh, education for uh, you know, professionals and so on. But besides that, we also have two other um, consortium which just shows you how our school is open to different experiences, to kind of cross experimental areas. We have a consortium mainly focused on fashion with the Università Bocconi, one of one of the most famous uh, economical university in Milan, and with a Catholic university for all the social sciences aspects, anthropology, and cultural elements. But we have as well another consortium, which is like a little child, because it's starting from the very, very beginning, with partners which come from a totally different area, which is art. Academia di Brera is called Ardent, Art Design and New Technologies. And after a few years of different approach, now we are on the markets with new masters which put together sound design, which put together new technologies and our areas. So I think from your conference, I'm very curious to see what will come out because from your speech, we will also focus how to in a way, correct our actual teaching, how to experiment new areas, you know. Uh, our rector has spoken about uh, the environmental um, atmosphere in which we want to grow our students. And the great decision we had to give to our students tools to spend their skills in the world. One of them could be uh, the English language, you know. In this conference, I have seen that's it. In uh, November, in the same class, we, have, we will have an international conference on fashion. With mainly, we get the papers, people coming from Latin America. And it will be, with all the problems, trilingual, English, Portuguese, and uh, Spanish. But it will be an opportunity to open, I have seen the names of the people here, also to other areas. As a school, we started our first year one year ago. Now in October, we will have our second year in India with Indian students. So quite soon, we will get in our master classes Indian students coming. We are starting a new double degree in Tonji in uh, China. We have uh, master courses going on with Tsinghua in Beijing. So really, the school is keen to open and we think about Africa, you know. I am very happy also for another reason. I must be very open to you. Because uh, when uh, Professor Volonté Paolo asked me for a sabbatical year, he just arrived in Milan from another university with a lot of money, an independent university in Bozen, you know. And after a few years, he was asking for a sabbatic. We give one sabbatic a year, so it's difficult, you know. But he had a program, you know. And I said, I want to go to London. I want to plan an international conference. So it's really a pleasure for me to have forced my board to say yes to this opportunity. In the meantime, this year, we have another professor in Pasadena doing something similar, you know. We had another researcher in Stanford doing the same. So I think sometimes it's my duty, even if it's not easy, to force my board to say yes to this opportunity. But I see the result, and I'm very pleased of that, you know. 
I'm very sorry from another point that I will soon leave because the whole day I am with American students. As you know, we have FIT New York here and we have a special program of students traveling in four cities in Europe. And today is Milan. They come from Paris, Antwerp, and I am the whole day there. So I make the break, coffee break for them just to rush here. Because this is very different from many schools you come from. The dean is not only dealing like the director, like the rector, with all the administration, but we are also teaching in normal classes, in specific classes, and because we think it's very good not to be only a research university, but a research and teaching university. And we need new ideas from conferences like this to improve our teaching. And I think, unfortunately, our students in this period have got final proofs, uh, final exams, you know. But I think uh, it's very important to be able to put together to these two elements in our university. I thank you very much and I wish you two, three good days of work in our university. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Professor Luca Guerrini, uh, Deputy Head of the PhD Program in Design. So, good morning everybody. I'm here on behalf of the coordinator of the PhD program, Professor Trabucco, who could not attend to this open session and who sends you his warmest greetings. It's a pleasure and a honor for us to support this fifth conference of the Italian Society of Science and Technology Studies which gives a community of design an opportunity to discuss about topics we're deeply involved in. And actually, um, many of our colleagues have uh, answered to the call for participation to this conference with many, with many contributions. Mm. Now, uh, I don't wanna make the speech too long, but maybe I can spend a few words about uh, our PhD program just to let you know what we do. Uh, the PhD program in design uh, here at the Politecnico di Milano is the oldest PhD program in this field in Italy. We started in 1993, and uh, we have uh, it, it is a three year course. Uh, we have currently about uh, 60 students, so about 20 students per year. They attend classes, they work deeply in developing their own research. They, they will stage abroad. Um, they live within an international community. Many of them come from abroad. Usually uh, we have students from coming from um, the eastern part of Europe, some, some of them coming from France, many of them come from uh, the Far East, Asia, and uh, recently uh, there is a group of students coming from Brazil. So it's uh, quite a, a challenge and a very uh, interesting experience. As you all know, design stands at the crossroad between the world of the artifacts and that of humans. And design investigates the relationship between uh, the two in order to improve it. So the world of the artifacts and the world of humans. Um, by the way, I do not feel very comfortable in using this term humans. Um, to me it seems uh, like being in a science fiction film, <laughs> but maybe this is exactly what happened during the last two decades because the world of the artifacts have changed dramatically and together with it, um, humans' lives have changed. And given that um, a good amount of these changes are somehow uh, the result of design-driven innovation, we have the responsibility 
to understand what has happened and what's happening and to evaluate when we have been successful and when we failed. So I do believe that this two and a half discussion here in the conference, the many issues you will talk about um, <clears throat> will draw some light on these um, uh, issues that are definitely a matter of design. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much to Professor Guerrini. Our next speaker is Professor Paolo Volonté, President of STS Italia. Thank you, Manuela, and uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is my immense pleasure and privilege to uh, introduce this conference. Uh, as you all know, and uh, you see on the headlines uh, of the conference, this is the fifth of a series. In fact, the Italian Society of uh, Science and Technology Studies, namely STS Italia, was founded almost 10 years ago uh, to build up an Italian network of science and technology scholars. And since then, it organizes a biannual uh, general conference to create chances for exchanging and sharing, and this is our main, main task, main goal here uh, in these days. Um, uh, research experiences, projects, and studies connected to social dimensions of techno-scientific phenomena. Over time, and thanks to the hard work of the boards of directors that came before us, uh, the conference has grown, calling the interest of scholars coming from all over the world. Uh, we are happy to host this time fellows coming from New Zealand, from Japan, from Canada, from Abu Dhabi, just to uh, mention a few of those coming from overseas. Uh, the fifth STS Italia conference is entitled A Matter of Design, Making Society Through Science and Technology. Uh, there is a long-standing tradition, a tradition of great breadth in science and technology studies, of uh, investigating the social life of objects. In the famous book, Elizabeth Shove wrote with some colleagues of hers, uh, The Design of Everyday Life, uh, a detailed description is provided. Sometimes this tradition focuses on human beings delegating their agency to non-humans. Uh, other times it deals with the way objects configure their users. In yet other instances, we have agency as the outcome of the relationship between artifacts and human beings. But as a whole, a sizable number of STS uh, studies put artifacts right at central stage, making them the leading actors in social life. Uh, there is also a a bit more limited tradition, but one that nevertheless exists, of considering artifacts that are the product of a process of deliberate planning, that is, objects made by design, and spaces made up uh, in architect of architecture, of course. Uh, I will avoid returning once again to the analysis inspired by uh, Bruno Latour. Um, some of them hover in limbo between fact and fancy and often uh, leave our design colleagues uh, cold. Uh, but let me bring up a project uh, done years ago at the uh, Rensselaer uh, Polytechnic uh, Institute that led to a special themed issue of design issues in 2004. I think somebody of that experience is in the audience uh, today or think of the uh, actor network uh, approach to architecture developed uh, by a scholar like Albina Yaneva or uh, the approach to design history developed by Kietil Fallan, who will be speaking to you uh, from this same place tomorrow. Well, we decided to hold our biennial convention jointly 
with the Politecnico di Milano's design PhD program because SDS uh, Italia believes the time has come to delve deeper into this issue. Although we do not wish to give up the broad thematic range that had always been a feature of our conference, uh, we do want to uh, make a special effort to study design culture as a particular form of interaction with the world of objects and a way to enlist objects in the networks and the groups that make up the socio-technical landscape. That is why we decided to bring Elizabeth Shaw and Kietel Fallan face to face uh, as takes place in tomorrow's plenary session. Uh, that is why we asked Charis Thompson today and Sheila Jasanoff on Saturday to uh, tackle uh, the question of design in their talks. By the way, I'm, I'm using the uh, we, not by chance, but because STS Italia is a very collective association, uh, I am supposed to talk to you today because of my formal position, but uh, this conference is taking place thanks to the work of uh, uh, a community that trusts in what we are doing. I am referring, first of all, to my uh, colleagues in the STS Italia uh, directory board, namely uh, Manuela Perrotta, who is here, and Paolo Magauda, uh, who will chair tomorrow's session. I am referring to the previous president of STS Italia, uh, Giuseppina Pellegrino, who was at the source of this conference, and uh, uh, today is not here for health reasons. Uh, and I am referring to all those who tangibly collaborated to the organization. If you look in the conference materials in, on the websites and in the book of abstracts, uh, you find a list of names under the title uh, organization board. Okay, uh, these are not just names. Uh, these are people volunteering their time and their skills uh, uh, to make possible our experience, our exchange, our uh, personal develop, development uh, along these three days. And I think we are all grateful to them for their um, terrific engagement. <coughs> Naturally, taking a step in the direction of design processes meant we would immediately stir up passionate interest along, among those who have always cared a, ho a whole lot about the social significance of design, designers themselves. This includes the theoreticians and historians of design as well. And on that note, let me thank the Politecnico di Milano's design PhD program, of which uh, I myself am actually part. From the very outset, in uh, his role as head of the program, Francesco Trabucco has been a firm believer in this initiative. Ultimately, he did much to help make it possible. This conference is experimenting with creating a convergence between two very uh, disparate and distant disciplinary groups. More precisely, this conference is actually based on that convergence. Uh, this convention is actually based on the conviction that the phenomenon of design, uh, a growing phenomenon in a number of uh, 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 today's cultures, can be understood only by the meeting of uh, uh, separate outlooks. These different perspectives work similarly to the way uh, a binocular vision takes advantage of two separate eyes to build depth in a field. Science and technology studies need the self-awareness of designers to reconstruct a reliable view of what role artifacts play in networks and in groups. Latour would say we have to study the world of design up uh, instead of studying it down. Uh, on the other hand, design studies stands only to benefit from the uh, STS version uh, as it strives to take 
in the broad socio-technical fabric into which both the designer's job and the design object consumer's work is woven. Allow me, if you will, to digress for just a minute on this point. Despite its name, science and technology studies, as we uh, all know, is not characterized by its uh, subject, science, technology. Uh, quite the opposite, what distinguishes STS is its specific approach to the socio-technical world. That is to say, the idea that human actors, non-human objects, and technological structures contribute in intimately connected fashion to building the world we live in. This approach is not, and must not become, the prerogative of a single discipline. If it were to uh, do that, it would reinforce the uh, uh, deleterious hyper-specialization of uh, Western science. Uh, all too often, even recently, there has been a tendency on part of, the, uh, of uh, uh, science and technology studies to struggle for one's own legitimacy on the basis of an uh, opposition to other disciplines. In much the same way, design as a field in the wake of its rapid uh, academization that uh, uh, happened over the last, let's say, 20 years, uh, keeps debating its identity and its boundaries vis-a-vis -vis whatever lies outside. This is not the way to promote the future of our culture, nor uh, does this work for science and technology studies, or for that matter, for design uh, studies. One essential aim of uh, uh, science and technology studies, in my view, is not to retrench with market boundaries, but to open up to dialogue with other scientific communities. For it is only by so doing, only by placing itself at the service of other scientific communities, that the specific uh, STS approach can find fertile ground for application in new and uh, unexpected environments. What we need to make knowledge uh, grow is cross-fertilization among various disciplines. As a matter of fact, in organizing this conference, we soon had to tackle the problem of mediating between two different epistemic cultures, of managing the point where STS meet design. An epistemic culture is not a, a collection of thoughts of, or theories uh, uh, on how to produce knowledge. An epistemic culture is a, a set of practices, a series of action chains, a network of players, a sequence of situations. These situations convey the actions, thoughts, and knowledge claims uh, uh, mm, made by these social players toward a certain idea of how things are to be done, of what makes for good research, what makes for good design, what makes for a good paper, and what makes for a good convention. In her 1999 book, uh, Karin Knorzettina describes these epistemic cultures as machineries, specifically as machineries of knowing composed of practices. She stressed the fact that epistemic subjects, that is, uh, knowledge producers, those of us who are seated right here today, for instance, are essentially mere derivatives of these machineries. There is an epistemic culture of STS, and there is an epistemic culture of design. And we, all of us, uh, are sitting here in the middle for these three days, and it will be exciting to see how we will be able to mediate between these two machineries, uh, machineries in many ways strangers to one another, uh, and in other ways contrapuntual. 
As you can see, we are faced with an exciting challenge, all of us. This is, a, this is a challenge because it is an opportunity to breach some of those mental barriers that uh, build up over time in our minds. It is an opportunity for cross-fertilization between worlds that are not well mutually acquainted, except for those uh, uh, um, fringes that specialized on the counterpart. As Michelle Lamont quite ably showed in her discussion of the American academic evaluation system, it is when uh, uh, academics find themselves having to draw equivalences between their standards uh, for how things are to be done in highly interdisciplinary contexts, for instance, that situations arise whose cognitive yield and whose intellectual satisfaction is greatest. So let us, therefore, uh, take up this challenge. We have three days to bring it off, with the hope that everyone is ready to take advantage of the chance to be surprised by the unexpected. I wish you all a wonderful time at the convention. I have to go, so I have to, to go because my students are waiting for me. And uh, today we have uh, in our classroom 25 students coming from the high school too. <laughs> and so I'm sorry, I'm, I hope to be here on Saturday for the closing of the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you to Paolo Volonté and uh, all the people who collaborated in the organization. Thanks. Um, uh, before we uh, begin with uh, uh, the conference, uh, with the talk of uh, by Charles Thompson, I have uh, some practicalities. I try to be very uh, quick in saying this. Um, tomorrow, uh, I was told uh, the uh, train service uh, uh, with uh, downtown uh, connecting Bovisa with the center of, uh, of Milan will be on strike. Welcome to Italy. Uh, this strike will start at 9 a.m. Uh, and end at uh, 5 p.m. So we suggest you just to be on time. <laughs> Uh, or, or uh, there is uh, well uh, the the um, buses they, they work so you could, uh, there is a bus coming from the uh, neighborhood of uh, Central Station railway station the number 92 uh, you can use this connection. Uh, regarding the venue, uh, behind your uh, badge you will find uh, a map of the campus, maybe you've already seen this, uh, with the place of the, of the rooms. Uh, uh, all the plenary sessions will take place in this room. Um, and uh, uh, most important, lunches and coffee breaks will take place in, in a space uh, behind that wall, uh, so ne uh, next uh, uh, door on, the, on my right, on your, on your left. We tried to support the environment, so we kept uh, paper documents to a minimum. Uh, you have access to the Polytechnic wireless connection, uh, and you have instructions how to, to, um, to do it, and on the um, uh, web page or on the website of the conference we f you find all uh, documents including the book of the abstracts. Uh, we would like to remind you that tomorrow uh, social dinner will be by reservation only. Uh, those who booked the dinner receive the booking confirmation among the other documents. Um, unfortunately the event is fully booked so we, we cannot accept uh, last minute uh, uh, bookings. Finally, um, this year will be uh, for the first time in 
the long history of STTS Italia, we will have uh, uh, the conference proceedings, and this is, uh, um, let's say, a, a result of the cross-fertilization between uh, the, the uh, epistemic cultures of uh, design and STS. Uh, they will be available, hopefully, by the end of the year on the conference website. They will be uh, open access with ISBN. Okay. So I think this is all. Uh, you, of course, you can ask all your questions to the um, conference reception, and they will give you all possible answers. Uh, so I think we can. Uh, so to follow this idea of the challenge of cross-fertilization between discipline, uh, today we wanted to explore the idea of design in different research fields. Uh, this will, be, will happen in the next days. Today, our first speaker will do it in the field of biomedicine. So I'm very pleased and honored to welcome Professor Caris Thompson. Professor Thompson joined the Department of Sociology of the London School of Economics from the University of California, Berkeley, where she was Professor of Gender and Women's Studies and a former director of the Science, Technology and Society Center. Before moving to Berkeley, she was in the History of Science Department of Harvard University. Uh, she is the author of Making Parents, the Ontological Choreography of Reproductive Technology, which won the 2007 Rachel Carson Award from the Society for the Social Studies of Science. And her last book, Good Science, the Ethical Choreography of Stem Cells Research, has been published last year by the MIT Press. So I'm very pleased to welcome our first keynote speaker.